about um, HS2 because Rishi Sunak has been told by Boris Johnson and David Cameron to drop plans to scale back HS2 and more amid warnings that a mutilated line would be insanity. Downing Street preparing to scrap the second leg of HS2. That's what we're led to believe anyway. There doesn't seem to be a straight answer out of them. Uh, there seems to be a lot of confusion around HS2. Ministers have also discussed terminating trains at a place in West London called Old Oak Common uh, rather than Euston at the centre. So there are questions about the plan linked to the East Midlands Parkway, southwest of Nottingham. There are all sorts of questions about this, but does it make sense in the first place? Let's talk to Councillor Marion Jenkins, who is Shadow Cabinet Member for Finance and Resources of Birmingham City Council, and Joe Rukin, who is uh, part of Stop HS2. Gents, you're both very welcome. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Uh, Marion Jenkins, maybe you could tell us first why you think HS2 is a good idea because some people just feel there's good money after bad being spent on this. What's the case for it from your perspective as a member of Birmingham City Council? Well, I think there's uh, three, three considerations, uh, Peter. We, we start uh, from a position where at the moment it's very there's such a demand on capacity on the West Coast main line that it's very difficult to add extra services for passengers or freight and um, we have to find a way of increasing the freight capacity particularly and it's been estimated for example that um, if we build HS2 uh, we'll be able to add 144 freight trains a day the equivalent of taking two and a half million lorry journeys a year off the road but but also we, we have to consider that um, uh, HS2 would bring a great economic uh, commercial boost for Birmingham. I mean, for example, 71% of businesses in Birmingham uh, support HS2. Uh, and I think the final thing we, we, we have to sort of take a look at ourselves in a as a country and think, are we really saying that when 28 other countries have high speed rail, including Spain, France, um, even the Americans are, are building high speed rail lines, uh, 30 other uh, uh, high speed rail projects are uh, being built around the world, are we really saying? that we cannot connect our, um, our major cities, um, you know, London, Birmingham, Manchester, even Leeds originally, are we really saying that as a country we cannot connect those by high-speed rail? So I think those are three reasons why the, it's right to do HS2 and why the project needs to go ahead. Um, Joe Rukin from Stop HS2. I hope I pronounced your surname correctly, yep. Joe. Yes, you have, Peter. Thank you. Excellent. What do you make of what uh, Myron's saying there? I mean, he's making some pretty strong arguments, isn't he? Birmingham certainly is one of the the major, the sort of major twin twin cities of Birmingham and Manchester, the big, the sort of second largest cities, depending on how you look at it, in this country. Why shouldn't they have a high speed rail link to not just London but other parts of the country as well? Well, they already do. It's called the West Coast Main Line. It's called the East Coast Main Line. It's called the Midland Main Line. The definition of high speed rail is 125 miles an hour. And a lot of people just basically try and ignore that if it's 125 miles an hour if it is on existing tracks. And a lot of people just basically ignore that fact because they want to build more stuff. And the real re reality with HS2 is that this was a project that was dreamt up by the construction industry. And that is why the project has kept going over budget and over budget and over budget because it was never really a defined budget. It was just a load of lobbyists went to Lord Adonis and said, we want to build the most expensive, sorry, the fastest railway in the history of the world with 250 miles an hour picked out the air for no good reason whatsoever. That was the original design speed, which dictates why it's so straight, why it's so damaging to the environment, why it's so damaging to local communities because it can't bend around sensitive sites. Even though they're saying, oh, we might not run it that fast, it's still being being built for that speed and uh, these these cities are connected and the whole idea that HS2 is needed for capacity it's just insane because people have said this since 2010 that there's no capacity on the west coast main line and then London Midland as they were changed the timetable and they added more trains and then London Midland changed the timetable and added more trains and when uh, the current uh, franchisee took over the the fast trains on west coast mainland they said they can add more trains and the whole concept that we need uh, hs2 capacity is specious because we said before covid and you know there's a bit of i told you so coming on here but we said before covid that in the future people will travel less 
because oh look we're doing this interview yeah on, on, on zoom. zoom on zoom absolutely let me let me bring marion jenkins in here uh, what do you make of what joe rookin is saying there because capacity i've been told at various times i cover westminster politics i've been told at various points well you know this is about speed this is about efficiency this is about capacity and all those arguments seem to change quite a lot marion and people see the huge amount of money that's been put into this and may have sympathy with what joe is saying what do you think yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I think that um, the speed of the journey to London is an advantage, but it's not the primary driver. Um, it, it's not even pa passenger capacity, it's freight capacity on the West Coast Main Line. That because of the demands, and the West Coast Main Line includes, for example, the commuter routes from Milton Keynes, Northampton into London, that there's so much demand for that, that you can't put additional freight capacity, particularly early in the morning. So there is an argument. I do agree with one aspect of what Joe was saying, which is the cost. And it's unfortunately something we seem to find very difficult to do. It, in this it country, has spiraled to, out of control. I mean, that's not your fault, well, but it has spiraled out of control, it, hasn't it? If I, if I t yes, I mean, if I tell you, the, you know, HS2 Limited was created in 2009, and we were talking about a budget of about 20 billion. It's now running 100 billion plus. And it's, it's particularly disappointing. It's one of the things I've seen, you know, since I, I moved in, into politics and, and into the public sector. It's, it's inability to procure efficiently mm. and to obtain value that, for that, money. That, that is a, frust a huge frustration. Nick Moore in Leicestershire has texted me to say, what mm. will happen to the poor folk who've already had their property effectively confiscated on, under compulsory purchase legislation if the project is scrapped? It was always a vanity project with never hope in hell of it being completed. Can I ask uh, Joe, actually, Joe Rukin, if it is scrapped, will you, I mean, I, I know you're against HS2, Clearly, you're part of a group called Stop HS2, but will you, I mean, there's so much money has been spent on this already. Will it be a kind of hollow victory for you, even if it is scrapped? Well, this is one of the ideas that get people put forward. They say, oh, well, we've wasted all this money, so we need to waste a lot more. You know, this whole sunk cost fallacy. And the idea that I should burn a tenner because I've already burnt a fiver is absolutely ridiculous. The bottom line is with hs2 that it was always going to be a waste of money and the, the numbers that you're talking about now will keep going up because there was never a proper budgetary process just uh this figure was invented in 2010 when when it was first made public it was going to cost 33 billion pounds and that was going to connect london and manchester and birmingham and leeds and heathrow and later on hs1 and that was a number that was invented just to get it politically supported just to make it politically okay. Okay. palatable because they've okay. never okay. really okay. looked at those costs properly okay Ma you, marion Mar okay joe i've yeah. just got to go to marion for a final word just, here marion go ahead uh, uh, the if you look at the um the costs of the work in um, the context of international high-speed rail it, you'll see that we have spent way more than most people i mean for example the budget that was originally talked about looks reasonable in the context of what's being spent for example on the TGV in France in, well, yeah. in the just, in just the let him speak US. Joe yeah in 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 in, in the US um, uh, now I know it's not always easy to compare because you have different land values inflation has a factor and it's been over a period of time but at the moment the cost of HS2 is looking like something like 10 to 15 times as expensive per kilometer as the TGV in France. Ma Marion, so sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but I just, I just cannot let you go without asking about the state of the finances of Birmingham City Council. You're yeah. the shadow cabinet member for finance and resources. Who is to blame for the fact that Birmingham Council is basically bankrupt? It's the Labour administration, Peter. It's clear. Um, the two, two, I mean, the, the, I've been on audit committee for 10 years in Birmingham City Council, and there have been numerous financial failings. But in the last few years, we've seen their disastrous failure to address the equal pay problems. So bear in mind, up to 2017, we'd already spent 1.2 billion on equal pay. Since 2017, because they didn't take the actions that were needed to put a proper job evaluation program in place, we're now looking at another billion pound. And we've also seen a disastrously failed implementation of a, an accounting system. Yes, just an accounting system, it's supposed to cost 20 million, which many people will think is enough for an accounting system. We're now looking at 100 million plus. Yes, and we're, re we're in a situation where the, city, the Labour City Council cannot even reconcile its bank account, or the auditors are saying they're not even sure they'll be able to sign off 
any accounts, even with a qualification for the last year. Disgr They've made that much that, of a mess. That's of it. just disgraceful stuff. Well, hold our feet to the fire, Marion. There's Councillor Marion Jenkins I, there. I will Shadow, I do and I will. <laughs> Shadow Cabinet Member for Finance and Resources at Birmingham City Council. We also heard from Joe Rookham there, who is from Stop HS2. No doubt we will return to this issue. I'd love to talk to both men again when things develop. Maybe we'll have them back on. Her